Let's bring now in Mark Lauder, former special assistant to President Trump and currently the chief communications officer of the America First Policy Institute. Mark, thank you so much for being with us. So, so we just Good heard morning. it from Joe right there. He needs 217. He doesn't have that. Do you think he will eventually get enough votes to make it past the finish line and end the stalemate? Boy, I would like to think so, but I just don't have any confidence really that anyone right now can get to that magic number of 217. And, you know, we, we seem to have this problem that, you know, we can we can get a majority of the conference, but you cannot get everyone. And it's getting to the point now where, you know, the various factions and it's not always the same people. They need to realize get 90 percent of a win and let's call it a win and move on. You can fight for the other 10 percent on the floor. You can fight for the other 10 percent in future years, but we need a Speaker of the House. They're not really divided on policy. They're divided on some procedural issues. They're divided on how quickly things can happen. The policies are all the same. We just need to get everyone into a room, put down the, the high school cliques, and let's vote and get on and get back to work. All right, so Mark, that makes complete sense. I think everybody on the outside looking in it seems to think the same thing. Let's just get this done. Why is it not getting done? Yeah, you know, there's a, well, I mean, high school is often compared to high school, uh, Congress is, and, and it's very true. There's a lot of cases where you have people who may have fought a battle with you years ago uh, on a piece of legislation or a committee assignment that you lost. And so there's a lot of petty infighting uh, amongst the members, and it happens on both sides. Uh, but right now it's fully on display with the right. And, and, you know, I get it. I mean, I do this for a living, and I, I often tell people when they're upset about a candidate or an office holder, it's like, if you want to have a candidate that you agree with 100% of the time, look in the mirror, put your name on the ballot, and run. <laughs> Other than that, you're always going to have differences with people on certain kinds of policies or how quickly they do this or what they voted for. Let's take most of everything we want. Let's get behind that person and let's just get them into that chair with the gavel so we can get back to work for the American people. All right, so we can get back to work here. So, Mark, question for you. You know, obviously right now the focus is on getting somebody to get the gavel. Somebody needs to actually hold the gavel. But will whomever gets it have to deal potentially with meeting the same fate uh, as Kevin McCarthy? Uh, ultimately, yes, unless they agree to change the rules. Yeah. Uh, and there has been some discussion about changing the rules, raising the threshold uh, for what it takes to vacate the chair. But, you know, I mean, here's the one thing, and it doesn't matter whether it's the speaker's race. It doesn't matter whether it's a budget deal. You eventually, when you have to deal with Democrats, you're going to have to negotiate, which means whatever piece of policy you put forward in the first place, it's going to get watered down. Or the spending is going to go up. So, Eventually, they're going to get tired of this, and if they have to start working with Democrats to get a Speaker of the House, then you're going to lose negotiating. You're going to lose things that you care deeply about. So don't do it. Don't force the majority to go work with the other side to get this done, because it will just weaken you in the end. Well, we know somebody who, who ultimately did get enough votes, right? Obviously, Kevin McCarthy at one point had them. Is there a world where he is, again, elected speaker? And do you think behind closed doors, maybe some of those Republicans who were so determined to get him out are now regretting it? I don't think so. And I, I, for the simple fact that you still see many of those eight running around and trumpeting the fact that they did this. Uh, and so they're very proud of the fact that they basically jumped out of the plane without a parachute or no way to land. Uh, and so I don't necessarily see any of them uh, suddenly switching and going back to saying, well, let's just go back to Speaker McCarthy. It could happen. You never know. It's Congress. But I, I would think they're probably going to move in a different direction, whether that is for just a short period of time, whether that's for the remainder of this conference, uh, this Congress, and we'll deal with it again in January of 2025. Those are the kinds of issues you could possibly negotiate around if you had a candidate. I'm not necessarily saying Tom Emmert or not. If you had a candidate saying, look, I'll just do it for the rest of this Congress, and then we can have this fight again in January 25 without my name involved, that could help possibly get you over the hump and get you to, 20, to 2017. All right, Mark, my last question for you. And again, you know, we definitely want to acknowledge that infighting happens on both sides of the aisle. It absolutely does. But what, if anything, does this chaos in the House right now say about the state of the Republican Party, especially, you know, obviously ahead of next year's election? Uh, nothing. 
you know, I mean, we've had these kinds of infights for a long time. The Democrats have their squad uh, that they fight with, and they're obviously on display right now, uh, you know, as it relates to the war in the Middle East. Uh, so th these kinds of things happen in Washington, D.C. I do not think the American people sitting at home in, uh, you know, in the Midwest, uh, in the Southwest, are sitting around worried about the Speaker of the House or who's going to get or what vote it happened. They want someone to secure the border, to lower inflation, gas prices, deal with the war in the Middle East. And uh, this is just a kind of petty D.C. politics that people brush aside. All right. Mark Lauder, great speaking to you. Thank you for your time. Good to talk to you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.